Hey, welcome back. My name is Matthew. Uh, today we're going to be doing some mathematical statistics. We're going to be talking about the joint PDF of uh, dependent random variables. So suppose that you have two random variables, a and b, with uh, PDFs given by f sub a and f sub b. When a and b are independent, the joint probability distribution is just the product of the marginal PDFs. However, we're interested in looking at dependent random variables where this is not the case. So to look at this, we're going to be using the uh, conditional probability formula, the probability of observing x sub b given a value of x sub a is the joint probability density function for a and b divided by the uh, marginal probability distribution function for a. And we're going to rearrange this so that we can find the joint PDF as long as we know the uh, marginal PDF for a and the conditional marginal PDF for B. All right, so time for an example. So suppose that you have n components. So here we've got a sample of n components. And m of them are defective. So we've got some defective components mixed in with a bunch of normal components. If we sample little n of them, then we can define the random variable x sub i to be 0 if the ith component that we've selected is not defective, and 1 if the ith component is defective. So we want to find the joint PDF of xi and xj when j is chosen immediately after i. So looking at this, it's if we choose one of these, we want the uh, PDF for, for x sub i, which, is, which gives the probability of x sub i being 0 or 1. And then we also want to find the probability density function for x j, which is after we've selected x sub i. This is going to be dependent because if x sub i is not defective, then we will have a different probability of selecting a defective component than if x sub i had been defective. So you can see, suppose that x sub i had been this one right here, then x sub i would be 0 because component i is not defective then the probability that x sub j would be defective would be 3 out of the total of 7. But if x sub i had been defective, say we had chosen this one, then x sub j would have the probability of 2 out of 7 of being defective. So depending on what x sub i was, x sub j will change, or the probabilities will change. So x sub i is uh, binomial. Well, it's actually Bernoulli, but uh, Bernoulli is binomial with n equals 1. So x sub i can be either 0 or 1, so it's binomial, and the probability of x sub i being equal to 1 is m over n, where m is the number of defective components and n is the total number of components. So the marginal probability distribution for x sub i is then m over n to the x i, 1 minus m over n to the 1 minus x i. And this is just the uh, uh, binomial distribution. So we have our 
p-value here, which is m over n, and our 1 minus p-value here, which is the probability of, uh, of selecting a component which is not defective. And the reason we're raising it to the power of x sub i, x sub i can be either 0 or 1, depending on whether it was defective or not defective. So if it was defective, x sub i would be 1, and we'd have a probability of m over n, and 1 minus x sub i would be 0, so this, would all, this term here would be just a 1. And likewise, if x sub i was 0, this whole term here would be 1, and this term here would be 1 minus m over n, which is our 1 minus p-value. To find the marginal distribution for xj, we notice that it is dependent on what our outcome for xi was, since this is being drawn immediately after xi. So if xi is 0, then our probability is m over n minus 1. The n minus 1 is because we've already drawn 1 for the x sub i, so we now have 1 fewer for our uh, total number of components. And since we pulled a component that was not defective, we still have m defective components. If x sub i was 1, so we selected a defective component to start with, then we have one fewer defective components and we have one fewer total components. So our probability is m minus 1 over n minus 1. Now, you can combine this into a single uh, single probability density function. So the probability of xj given xi. So you remember that xi is either a 0 or a 1. So if xi is 0, we have m over n minus 1, which is this right here. And if x sub i is 1, then we have m minus 1 over n minus 1, which is this right here. And the 1 minus this term right here is just our 1 minus p-value. So the probability of selecting a normal functioning component versus the probability of selecting a defective component. Alright, so like I said before, we're going to be using this right here. So we know f of xi and we know f of xj given xi. So just multiplying those together, this is uh, f of xi and this is f of xj given xi. So we have our uh, our joint probability density function. Okay, and uh, next part of the question, let's uh, find the covariance of xi and xj. So covariance is defined to be the expected value of the product of uh, xi and xj minus the, expect the product of the expected values of xi and xj. Okay, so we're going to find each of these three terms so that we can compute the covariance. So the first one, the expected value of xi, because this is a discrete random variable, we're going to be summing over all the possible values of xi, which is 0 and 1, and xi times the probability of xi. So plugging this into the formula that we found for f of xi, we have m over n to the 0, 1 minus m over n, 1 minus 0, so that's when xi equals 0, plus this when xi is equal to 1. And if you just simplify this, you see that the probability, or sorry, the expected value of xi is m over n. Alright, so the second piece we need to find is the expected value of xj. Now, this is a little identity, so very useful. The expected value of a random variable is equal to the expected value with respect to, say, xi, of the expected value with respect to xj of xj given xi. 
So taking the expected value with respect to xi, we have the sum over xi, the probability of xi, and then multiplied by the value we're taking the expectation of. So that's this right here. Now expanding this expected value, we have the sum over xj, the probability density function of xj dependent on xi times xj. And we have the values of f of xi and f of xj xi. So if we sum over xi, then we get this expression right here. And we can then sum over xj, and because we're multiplying by xj, when xj is 0, this whole term is 0, and when xj is 1, we just end up with this here. Okay, and simplifying this a little bit, notice that uh, we can pull out a factor of m from this term and a factor of m from this term, so we get that there. And this here is n minus m m minus m, so we're adding n minus m plus m minus 1, so that's this right here. And the denominators, we notice that it's just n times n minus 1, n times n minus 1, so they're uh, similar denominators, we can combine them. And simplifying, m minus m is 0, n minus 1 cancels with n minus 1 on the bottom, so we're left with just m over n. And notice that the expected value of xj is exactly the same as the expected value of xi. Alright, and the third piece that we need to find is the expected value of xi times xj. And this is defined to be this, so we have the sum over xj, the sum over xi, xi times xj, because that's what we're finding the expectation of, times the probability of xi xj. Now, we found this already, so I'm just putting it here so that you can remember it and watch. So xi and xj can both take on 0 and 1. Now, we're multiplying by xi times xj, so when xi is 0, we have 0 times the function evaluated at the zeros, but 0 times anything is 0. And again, when xj is 0, we have, uh, oh, sorry, here we have when both xi and xj are 0, here we have when xi is 0, and here we have when xj is 0. And all of these are 0. So we end up having just the expected value of xi xj is f of 1, 1. And plugging in xi equals 1 and xj equals 1, we get this formula right here, which is already simplified. So just to recap, we found that the expected value of xi is m over n, the expected value of xj is m over n, and the expected value of xi times xj is m over n times m minus 1 over n minus 1. Now we need to put it all together. So a reminder, the covariance is given by this. And we found all three of these. So we're just going to plug it all together. And we have m over n times m minus 1 n minus 1 minus m over n times m over n, which is just m over n squared. Now, we can factor out an m over n, and that leaves us with m minus 1 over n minus 1, minus m over n. Now, factoring out the negative sign, just to switch the ordering, and factoring out 1 over n minus 1, we end up with m times n minus 1, which is this cross multiplication here, minus n times m minus 1, which is this cross multiplication here, over n.
okay, which is what we have here. And this simplifies to m over n, well, negative m over n, n minus m over n, 1 over n minus 1. And here you can divide out the n. Okay, we have a small typo here. This n here should be a 1. There we go. So our end result for the covariance is the covariance of xi, xj is negative m over n, 1 minus m over n, 1 over n minus 1. And remember that m is the number of defective components and n is the total number of components. And this is true for any i and any j as long as j is picked after i. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you all next time.